Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Epic Street. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the top gainers and the top losers of uh, last week. Uh, the top gainers are Ape, GMT, Kawa, or, and the top losers are Audio Waves and HD, right? And before we actually dive deep into the technicals of these uh, coins, please make sure to head on over to our YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button. And if you want to stay updated with the hardest trends in the cryptocurrency market, please make sure to click on the bell icon. You can also follow us on Twitter at FXS, FXS Crypto. And if you like what I do, you can also give me a follow on Twitter at Mangego with a zero at the end. Right? Back to the top gainers, right? Ape, Ape, Ape coin. I think we set a new all-time high for Ape over here. It's a nice, that's a nice trend up. Okay, uh, so far since its uh, inception here, probably on 17 March, uh, the price was stuck between $9.6 and $14.4. And now the price has not only breached above this range high, but it also retested it as a really good support level and then blasted, blasted higher, produced a higher high, and now it's consolidating again, right? Uh, let me just take this off because it's irrelevant right now. Uh, this is relevant. This is not relevant. Right, so right off the bat, what I notice here is that RSI has been producing lower lows, whereas the Ape coin has been producing higher highs, which is clearly a bearish divergence. Right? And also, if you draw another line, about if you draw another line from here, uh, it is not the greatest falling wedge, I mean rising wedge, but I think it works. And as you can see here, there's no bullish divergences from a lower time perspective. Uh, I think there, yeah, there is one around here, I think. It's been it's already playing out right now. We produced a lower low here on at the RSI, but the price produced a higher high, which was a bearish bullish divergence. And now the price has rallied 4.38 percent. Right. So uh, what I think is going to happen is the price is going to retest this uh, upper trend line. We're probably going to break above, uh, which could be a fake out, which will be a fake out, and then the price is going to retrace back to this uh, upper upper range or the range high at $14.4, right? So this is what I think is gonna happen just by eyeballing it. But if you look at the theoretical measurement rule for this, uh, if we get a breakdown somewhere around here, you're looking at an 18% downswing. Again, it puts you roughly around $14, kind of the same level that I just predicted, right? So I think, yeah, I think this is how the trend is gonna uh, continue. And if you look at, uh, if you haven't checked out the Bitcoin video, this is gonna be a quick, uh, quick outlook on what's happening right now. Bitcoin is looking pretty good here around this support level here. So I believe all coins are gonna rally as Bitcoin goes up and retest this level here at 39.4K. So this minor uptrend that we are gonna see is what's gonna propel ApeCoin is what's going to propel ApeCoin to uh, produce this bullish fakeout. And I think uh, that's, that's that's a good place to short ApeCoin down to $14, right? If, if you are not happy about this target here, I think conservative traders could book profits on $16. Uh, it's understandable considering how choppy the market's been uh, over the past few weeks, I think months, if you look at uh, the total consolidation that's happening in the ascending triangle. So, Assuming we get a breakout somewhere around, I mean, a fake out from around here, we are looking at a 20% downswing. But if you consider from here, it's again any 18% downswing for ApeCoin. Uh, let's take a look at the next uh, top gainer of the last week, which was GMT. Okay. Things aren't bad for GMT as compared to ApeCoin. Right. Let's, uh, yep, there's. Oh, we're at a really good support level here from a daily time frame. Uh, from a 12 hour time frame perspective, nothing's changed. There is, however, quite a bit of inefficiency that was formed here, which is FVG, right? So we could, we could essentially, if we get a daily close below 3.14, 3.15, I think there's a good chance price could head down, fill this gap, and do something like this before it establishes a direction bias. Right, but before that, let's take a look at uh, the lower time frame and see if we can expect some sort of an upswing. Um, okay, cool. There's a resistance level right now. We're consolidating within these two levels here, and I believe. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't see a reason why uh, GMT is supposed to go higher. 
right? Uh, the, the only chance, as I explained in the previous session, is that if Bitcoin rallies up, and it will, I believe, uh, there's, a, there's a good chance price could peak above this uh, 3.36 level here and uh, fall back down into this uh, fair rally gap here, extending from 2.96 to 2.6 dollars. So I think uh, it would be a good buy at 2.6 dollars uh, if you if Bitcoin is bullish, right? But if Bitcoin fails to close above 38K, I mean, if, if Bitcoin closes below 38K, there's a good chance price could head down to 35K, which is the next support level. So in that case, I think you should just wait for the price to probably head down to this level here around $2, $2.1. So for now, I think the upside for GMT is capped at 3.36, 3.4 if we're lucky, and the downside at $2.6. Right, and if you if I just take these off and take a look at this trend, it's pretty simple, right? Price formed a range uh, over here, and then we moved above the range. Right now we're consolidating above the range, which is uh, in a normal in a, in, in a bullish market. It, this would have been a bullish consolidation where the price would uh, make a run at the high here. We could form an inverse bar pattern, and then another consolidation, and then we move higher. Right, but since this is not a bullish market and we're kind of hesitant on what's gonna happen next and there's lack of volatility and then we have the bearish conditions for Bitcoin. So I believe uh, there's a good chance price is gonna head down to this 50% replacement level here at 2.60, which incidentally also coincides with the lower limit of this fair value gap here. It's sending from 2.96 to 2.6 dollars. Let's take a look at the next coin, which is Kava. Again, I'm seeing a similar trend, range low, forms a range high. The price consolidated around the midpoint mid for quite some time, finally broke above it. And right now, kind of, there's been a trouble for Kawa to move above the $5 level here. And as you can see here, every time price moved above, there was a massive sell-off. Uh, that's what those weeks, these weeks explain. And even here on uh, 21st April, price pierced the $5 level, and then we saw a massive, massive rejection, right? So far, the, the bulls have managed to absorb the selling pressure and finally push through it. But I think uh, bulls are exhausted, and now we could be sitting at an overbought condition from the RSI, exactly so. And on top of that, we have a bearish divergence here for, for Kawa, right? So once we get a swing Okay, on a, on a daily time frame, it's gonna take another uh, day to form a swing low, but that could be a little late where price could move down here and you could miss an opportunity to short it. So let's take a look at it from a 12 hour time perspective. Uh, it is still forming a swing high. A swing high usually contains uh, stuff like this, where we have uh, a candle set up something like this, right? As long as we have the middle candle as the highest point and the other two candles below it, it's a swing high. And right now what we're seeing is a low. This is the middle candle. And if the next candle doesn't does not go above the high of this particular candle, which is $5.26, I think we are good. If we get a next candle as like this, something like this, uh, I think this is, by the end of the day, I think we're gonna get this by the end of the day. If we get something like this, I think it's a really good uh, place to short. Kava, I think uh, you short Kava to the 50% retracement level here at 50% retracement level here at 4.46, right? From the current position, this is a small 11% downswing. So that's pretty much it for the top gainers. Uh, let's take a look at the top losers, which is audio. Okay, the current state for audio doesn't look good. Like usually when we discuss top gainers and top losers, we uh, kind of summarize uh, if we if the coins are actually good for the next week, right? And Ape, Ape looks, for the, uh, for the short term perspective, Ape looks like it's gonna head down to $14. GMT also looks like it's gonna head down to the middle uh, midpoint of this range here at $22.6. And Kava also does not look pretty good because we're expecting it to retrace down to the 50% level here. So, yeah, none of the gainers are looking pretty good here. And uh, let's come to audio. And if you look at audio, the support level here at $1 is extremely important, right? Once we kind of lose that level, there's a massive fair value gap 
uh, inefficiency of the price and it could head down all the way to 0 0.78. So yeah, uh, audio looks pretty bad as well. Uh, so for now, I think there's easily, I can easily tell you that the coin is gonna head down to the $1 psychological level here. There could be a quite a bit of consolidation around this level, kind of like uh, what happened here between 21st March and 25th and 28th March. Once this level, once we get a daily close below this, I think it's a, it's a really quick move to uh, 0.78. That's, uh, that's my take on uh, audio. Waves. Okay, I think I think I have the waves set up here. Nope. I have a wave set up here. Yep. Okay. Uh, things are looking pretty bad here for waves because we not only destroyed the immediate demand zone here, daily demand zone here. The first demand zone extending from 21 to 24, but we've also obliterated the next demand zone from extending from roughly $16 to $18. And right now we're kind of moving into this uh, favorable gap here, extending from 13.3 to $16.71. So it's pretty simple guys. You, you can expect this massive downswing to continue up to $13. Right. And then I think this is, this is where the base forms anywhere from 13.3 to I think uh, eleven dollars. This is where you can expect waves to form some sort of a base. Uh, I don't see a lot of upside here for the waves, so this is filled. This is filled. Now we're getting uh, yep, yep. This is a classic uh, retracement, right? And if you look at it from a fib extension levels, it's still not in the oversold condition. Okay, actually we are. Price has breached the 79 Fib level here. And yeah, I think uh, 11 to $13 is where you can expect waves to stabilize and see some sort of a, a replacement or a pullback up to $19.8 or $20. Yeah, I don't see a lot of upside here for waves. Uh, the downside cap at $11. And if we get a move below or daily close below $8.19, uh, it's, it's, it's really bad for waves and then you can expect the price to move uh, a little lower to probably 5.3 dollars although this is an extreme case scenario i don't see this happening anytime soon so that's it for waves let's take a look at h and or helium perp the coin has officially okay it hasn't yep it's it's traversing this falling wedge pattern which is pretty important but considering how I'm expecting Bitcoin to drop lower after a minor uptrend. I think yep. So right now we're bouncing off of the 16.3 support level here. If we break this, there's a good chance price comes down to $14. I think uh, if you draw fit extension from here to here, we've already moved down into the extremely oversold conditions. So a stabilization around here and then a move back to 19 or probably $20 is a good way to go. So you're looking at a 33% upswing if we get a retest of $14.1. As for the downside, if we get a close below 14.11, uh, there's a good chance price could head down to 9.3 and sweep below that, collect liquidity resting uh, below these equal lows from here. So that is pretty much it for the top losers. If you enjoyed the session, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.